Hello and welcome to the UAWC Lab. Today we are going to be going through a tutorial on how to use the MakerBot Replicator 5X. As we did with the other printers, we will start by changing the filament. To change the filament on the MakerBot Re Replicator 5X, go to the filament button on the main menu by turning the wheel and then press down on the button. First, we need to unload the filament. Press down again. The printer has to heat its extruder before we can remove the current filament. We have to wait until it reaches 215 degrees Celsius. The printer is now fully heated and we are now allowed to take the filament out of the extruder. Now we must unload the filament from the holder. Make sure to take any loose filament and place it through one of the holes in the holder, or the spool. I have chosen this filament to print with next. Before we initiate the loading sequence, we must first add it to the holder. And place it through We can now begin the loading sequence by rolling to the right and pressing load. To load the filament, slowly push the filament into the smart extruder until you can feel it being pulled by the mechanism within. Before our job starts printing, it's good to add another level of support, even if we're using graphs. To do so, grab one of the glue sticks at each 3D printing station and conservatively apply it to the platform. Now we can load our object into the software and send it to the printer. Once you're at the computer next to the printer, go to the Start menu and open up MakerBot Desktop. Once you've loaded MakerBot Desktop, go to the File and Open to open your piece and bring it onto the platform in the software. Your piece may be in the 3D folder if saved via Thingiverse, or you can find it in a removable drive of your own. Today I'm going to be loading the object Stretchlet onto the platform in the software. Our object is now loaded on the platform. The software is the same exact software used on the MakerBot Replicator 2X. If you've already watched the video on how to use the MakerBot Replicator 2X, you can consider the next five minutes as a refresher. The following icon is highlighted and it allows us to change the view of what we see on the build plate in the software. Below that icon allows you to move your object's position. You must click the object to do so, and you can move it any place on the platform. As well, using the controls in the highlighted box, you can move it up down, left, right, 
or any direction on the x, y, z axis. The icon below that one allows you to rotate your object. This is not as necessary with a circular object such as the one that we have currently loaded on the platform. The final icon on the left side of the page allows us to scale and rescale our object. We can make it larger and smaller and we can adjust our scaling to reset it back to what it was when we first loaded the object. As well, we can change the units and select the maximum scale possible. Once we finish our preliminary settings, we can go to the settings bar at the top. These are the settings that are directly sent to the printer that affect how our print job turns out while it's being printed. Under our quality settings, we can adjust the infill, the number of shells, and the layer height. Recognize that the infill, number of shells, and layer height affect the quality and definition of your object, but if you have a higher quality and definition on your object, it will also take significantly longer to print. If you're not sure what exact quality settings you need for your object, you can just use the defaults by clicking Use Defaults. The number of shells adjust how thick the object is, as does the layer height, and the infill determines whether the object will be more or less hollow. If the object has a low infill, it's more hollow than, say, an infill of 90%. If your infill is 100%, your object is completely filled and is not hollow. At the right hand of the settings box, we can see raft and supports. Adding a raft to your object keeps it from warping when the object gets too tall. Some objects require a raft, although not all do. Some objects even come, in, come with a built-in raft, and a raft is not necessary. If you're not sure if your object needs a raft, consult one of the workers in the 3D lab. Supports prevent the drooping of plastic from overhang. If you have a part of your object that is hanging over, there needs to be something to support it so that the plastic doesn't fall down when you're printing. As well as with the raft, if you have any questions on whether or not you need supports, please consult someone in the lab for help. Resolution settings are fairly straightforward. A higher resolution will take longer, but it will also make your object more defined. A low resolution is a quicker print job, but your object won't have as much detail and definition. Once you've chosen your settings, press Save Settings. Now we can send our object to the printer. When you're ready to send your object to the printer, go to the right-hand corner and press Print. If you receive the following notification box, click Keep Position or Move to Platform, depending upon the position of your object and where you would like it to be. Typically, you would click Move to Platform, since objects print better when your object is centered as well as possible. Under the print box, we can see how long our print will take, the filament being used, the resolution of the job, and whether or not we are using rafts and supports. It's good to double check these things just in case you don't want to have an overnight job or you would like to make sure that you have all the necessary settings put in place. As well, before we send our object officially to the printer, we can check a print preview right here. Moving down the bar on the left-hand side of the box can show us layer by layer how our print job will work. If you see any discrepancies, cancel the print job and change your settings, or if necessary, alter your object. Since this object has no obvious discrepancies, we can finalize it and send it to the printer. To do so, click Start Print. Our job is now sent to the printer.